Aside from looking like an oversized iPhone, the iPad in general, so long as you have the USB-C port one, you have access to a bunch of amazing things that it can do. So instead of spending more money on purchasing like a portable monitor, using a secondary microphone to increase your audio quality on your device, here are some remarkable things that a USB-C iPad, even the iPad mini can do. With a cheap, affordable $20 capture card, you could give your iPad a HDMI port which combined with a third party app, I'll have this one in the description down below, or you could download it on the title screen you see right there. This app allows you to use your iPad as a secondary monitor, as you see, it does have an HDMI. And I've used portable monitors in the past, and the only drawback to these is not only are they not crazy expensive compared to an iPad, but they're almost half the price, especially like the iPad mini, but they don't deliver the high resolution quality as well as the brightness that we all know and love, especially comparing it against an iPad. But this HDMI allows to utilize the brightness as well as the resolution quality of the iPad that you're using, which should allow you to play games or use this as a secondary monitor if you're connected to a computer. And since this is hardware, with an iPad Pro, you could easily utilize the 120 Hertz refresh rate that it has. And from my user experience, I know this depends on the app as well as the capture card, but I personally never notice a annoying latency issue when it comes to gaming and playing competitive multiplayer games by having this setup like this using an iPad, especially since an iPad already is in our inventory for college students or places that you have like limitations in terms of like space. It's actually really easy using this as a secondary monitor than purchasing an actual secondary monitor. If you have the Magic Keyboard, you can use the USB-C port down here to continue charging your iPad so you're not left stranded when it dies. Or you can purchase an HDMI hub that supports power pass-through as well. But if you like to do things wirelessly, you can always use Apple Native Sidecar, which basically allows you to wirelessly connect a Mac computer to your iPad wirelessly and you can control it with the trackpad off your computer or your magic mouse, depending on the preference you're using. You can notice you control both of these two devices, including keyboard controls, allowing you to control hands-free both these two devices. And if you have the magic keyboard or similar keyboard set up on your iPad, you can also control your Mac computer this way as well, including the keyboard support. This is really awesome and I love using this feature a lot, but you could also allow this to become the extended monitor for your computer wirelessly this way as well on your Mac computer. So only works on Apple, unfortunately, but this is a great cheap method to really utilize a high resolution display without spending a lot of money on a gaming monitor as an example. Now to be about iPads with USB-C, if you don't have an iPhone that has a USB-C capability, a thing that I like doing a lot on my iPad is using it as a portable hard drive, flash drive, thumb drive, whatever your needs is. If you have storage available on your iPad, you could click and drag drop files from your iPad to your computer. It's a much more quicker method than traveling with a bunch of like flash drives in my opinion. And this is something that I was personally using a lot on my iPads before I had my hands on the iPhone 15. So great alternative for a portable hard drive on the go. But of course, best results if you use an Apple computer. So depending on the iPad you have, but the majority of iPads, um, the front facing camera isn't really always the best resolution or the best quality to do professional calls if you need a high quality front facing webcam for like FaceTime or Skype. But thanks to that USB-C port again, you could just use a third party wireless webcam, or I mean wired webcam, I wish wireless exists, and just quickly swap your front facing camera with something better and more professional. So you have that freedom. In addition to that, you can also do the exact same thing with audio quality. You don't have to be stuck with the integrated microphone that the iPads have. Even the iPad Pros actually see much benefits upgrading to an actual professional style or better quality microphone, I should say, than the existing built-in microphone. Here's a sound example of how they sound like. As this is how the integrated microphone sounds like with the iPad Pro latest model. And if I go ahead and plug in like the DJI mic, it sounds like this. This is how it sounds like with the DJI mic. And the beauty about this microphone is I could have two mics connected at once. Ideal for like podcasts or interview situations. So something simple like even the DJI mic can actually be compatible, fully compatible for any audio microphone needs off your iPad. And if you again, if you run out of ports, you can always just get a USB-C hub. I'll have this one link in the description down below if you don't own a hub yet. Now, aside from all that, 
Believe it or not, the iPad itself is a nice portable gaming console. You see, since wireless streaming is now a thing, you have Xbox, Cloud Gaming, Sony's Remote Play, and Steam Link, you could play a lot of your favorite console-based or PC-style based games, so long as you have an appropriate account on your iPad, as it does support full gaming console support, so like your PlayStation 5 controllers, fully compatible, Xbox, even the Xbox Elite, the Nintendo, the Joy-Cons are compatible on the iPad, and pairing it up is super easy. You just need to make sure you understand how to put the controller in its pair mode. I'll have links to some examples in the description down below, but with the Xbox, you just hold down the sync button on top, as well as the Xbox home button on the controller until it starts flashing and pulsing. That means the controller's in pair mode. You can simply just go onto your iPad, Bluetooth settings, search for it, and you'll be able to connect right there. And this is Apple supporting these third-party controllers as you're gonna see all your functions, your common controls on the controller is all right there. It just works perfectly fine. No need to download like third-party apps or anything like that or third-party adapters to make it work. So because of this, I've been able to use this as a portable gaming console, especially while I'm traveling. And then you have game emulators as well that could take full advantage of this as well. So you can play your retro games on your iPad itself without having to rely on internet connectivity. One of the few many different uses you could get out of the iPad for gaming. Now growing up, you know, we all have to scan a document. The old method is just to print it out and then sign the paper right there and then scan it and then send it as a PDF file. So you see, with this paper that we just printed out, this is a fine example. One method of doing this is by simply unlocking your iPad. Then when you go into the folder app, I'm sorry, files, click on here. What I like to do is click on the iCloud because this will be automatically synchronized on my Mac computer as well, as well as my other Apple devices. And just long hold on a blank section like this and where you see scan document, click on here and then just go ahead and step back and scan that document and then tap save. Once you're done doing that, select the document and on the very top right here for markup, this is where you enable the Apple Pencil. You can start like filling up things or signing things right here and then tap done. And then once you're done, obviously you can long hold and go into the share icon either email it from here or text it to the individual. But instead of having to print out the paper, a cooler method, cooler by cooler, I mean like saving ink and paper and not using your printer, is look for the file that you're trying to print out or sign, but on the top arrow right here for sharing, go down and select save to file, select the location. Again, again I like using the iCloud just for that benefit. Save it from there, go back to your file, locate it, Tap on it, tap markup, and begin filling up everything right here. And once you're done, just go ahead and tap the up arrow to share it to email, text message, and etc. And that's how you can professionally sign documents without having to have the physical paper or just save the file, the PDF on your iPad and just start editing like that. And yes, you can also use the Apple Pencil, but not everybody has access to the Apple Pencil. The finger is the easily the next best thing. And there you have it. Now you know how to really use your iPad to its full potential or show friends and family some clever things they probably didn't know about that they can do on their iPad. But now make sure you are protected and secure your device from easily being stolen. So I highly recommend adjusting a couple additional settings to maximize the security settings on your iPad to prevent that from ever happening. I go more into detail in this video over there. Thank you so much for watching.